the day, my goodness. First two off the bat. Great stuff. Can't wait to see what Georgia has in store for us here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that everybody is back from their bio break. That music was wonderful. It made me wanna move, especially after Sam's chat there about physical movement, moving the body. Um, next up, we're gonna take a little bit different turn here and learn about beliefs. Georgia Ellis is going to chat with us about the hidden power of self-belief. Georgia will show you how to switch from feeling inferior and like an imposter to befriending your inner critic to prevent self-sabotage, helping you to truly believe in who you are and what you are capable of doing. Explore the rem remarkable workings of your mind and how it does its best to keep you safe by holding on to beliefs and perceptions that perhaps no longer serve you. Georgia will demonstrate how to uncover those often hidden beliefs and what you can do to align your mind to our ever-changing world. Georgia is a human potential pilgrim, deep diving and experimenting with all things that can make us better humans for more than 20 years. Blue Chip Minds is her baby. And for the last 10 years, she has trained and coached over 16,000 people across the globe. She is the creator of numerous personal and professional development programs, including the Future Ready Leaders Toolkit, Life Reloaded, The Leading Edge, and Collective Evolution. A nature junkie, Georgia loves exploring new places, pushing her limits and meeting everyday people who are doing their bit to make the world a better place. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Georgia Ellis, the wonderful creator of the Thriving Mind Summit to you today. In the house, thank you, Lara. All right, hey, I'm feeling a bit vibed after that music. I'm kind of glad that um, we chose a little bit of Buble to set the scene for us for this next session. Huge shout out to both Erica and Sam um, in their presentations. I have one thing that Sam mentioned that is absolutely pure gold, which is a lovely segue into what I'm going to cover, is he said, I actually wrote it down because uh, it was so powerful. So uh, you all would have seen that Sam took us through the process of having a goal and that requires behavior change. And then that leads to habit formation. Then it leads to a new identity. And then along the way, he said that your goal and a new identity are actually one in the same. And so I'm going to unpack that a little, a little further in this presentation. Now, this presentation is going to be a little bit interactive. So I will ask you to type some answers in the chat. And about halfway through the presentation, we will pop you into some breakout rooms of maybe three or four for you to discuss some things as well, because we actually learn through discussion, not just sitting here having information um, thrown at us. So we'll do a little bit of that in this session as well. If you don't feel comfortable being in a breakout room when Lara um, creates the breakout rooms and sends us to the breakout room, um, you just don't go there. However, hopefully it doesn't mean that there's only one person in a breakout room, but do your best. So yeah, goals and identity are one in the same. So if you've got a goal to do something, you need to create an identity that's aligned to that. But what happens is the old identity, which is safe and familiar, is going to put up a fight because this is the known. And I'm going to walk you through what this part of us is and how it tries to protect us. So I, like Sam, I do have a screen to give you a bit of visual. I mean, a presentation. Let me just get it up for you. Okay, so the power of self-belief, what we're we going to look at, there's three key things from this presentation. The first thing is we're going to look at the, the concept of self-belief. What is that? Then we're going to look at how we can identify the inner critic. How does it show up? What's its modus operandi? And then how can we start to overcome self-sabotage? How can we start to change the things that are potentially holding us back from those goals we're setting ourselves, whether they're the goals for fitness, whether they're goals in our career, um, any kind of goal that you have, there is always going to be a part of you that will potentially hold you back. And we're going to explore that today. 
So the first thing is let's move over to the chat. I want you to pop into the chat. What's one thing you want to achieve? You know you can achieve it. You've maybe tried a couple of times to make a start. You may have you know, got a little way through and then you've stopped or you're feeling stuck. What's a goal that you've had or currently have that you don't seem to be getting anywhere with? So let me know in the chat to bring the chat back up. Let me multitask with all these. Jaleel's got a book, a book of poetry I've been writing for 10 years. Okay, beautiful. Is I'm going to get you on mute, Jaleel. So is that something that is it taking 10 years because it's you just don't get to it or is it the writing process is actually progressive that way? Is it deliberate, mm -hmm. the 10 years? The 10 years is not deliberate. Um, I definitely have been writing it actively for that 10 year period with varying degrees of activity. Um, I think the more specifically the challenge that I uh, am facing with the book is the it's like bringing it all together and the actual process of going from, you know, um, just a hundred or so poems in some kind of ununiformed, unstructured way into an actual coalesced full book that's ready for publication. That's that's my that's my sticking point. All right, beautiful. Pay attention. You might get some gems today. And I can see too that we had um, a couple of other people who have got Tate sticking to her leadership map. So I know Tate and I know she created a leadership map. So hopefully you'll get a couple of reminders, some insights for you today, Tate, in relation to that. Kerry, designing my own future. Okay, I, I know Kerry knows how to do that. So maybe she's leveling up a little bit. Merrin wants a constant meditation practice or con constant, yeah, consistent. Uh, and expanding my business organically. Hey, Sunitha, I can relate to that. So a little story for you all about what we're going to be covering today is that what I'm sharing with you, the insights and the maps and models come from personal experience. So I spent over 20 years in the corporate world, so in a corporate organization, and then I left in, with the aim to start my own business. And I actually floundered for quite a while, I'd probably say eight months. And the reason was my belief systems and my identity weren't aligned to actually what I was doing. And it wasn't until I had that aha moment and started putting things into place that my business grew. And in some, some would say it had a quantum leap, but it wasn't the business that changed, it was me. It wasn't the external environment that was different, it was me. So let's start, let's start exploring some of these um, some of these things so that we can start getting more aligned to what it is that we're working towards. To do that, you need to really understand belief. So we've got two. I've come to know we've got two types of belief. So we have the type of belief that sits in our conscious mind. So these are the things like, I'm going to use Jaleel as an example. Jaleel might say, I'm going to write a book. I believe I can write a book. I've got these ideas for a great book. I know how to write a book. Jaleel, are they all correct? To some extent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've got, we've got these conscious ideas about it. So Tate in her, she'll go, okay, I've got these stories about leadership and I've got this map, which is my knowledge, and I've got this plan. This is all at the conscious level, which is great. They're the types of beliefs we need to, they give us their ideas and they help us to move forward. But what most people don't understand is that there's something that sits below the conscious and it's called the subconscious. And this controls 95% of what we do. So if our conscious mind controls 5%, we might get some things done with a little bit of willpower. But the subconscious is going to control 95% of what we do. And so herein lies the issue. So for me, if I think about my role in or my journey in starting a business was Oh, I know how to start a business. I've seen it before. I've seen my parents had a business. I ran a business in my 20s with my ex-husband. I've got some knowledge around it. But my personal experiences 
my beliefs that were in the subconscious mind, the feelings that I had about my self-worth and the actions I were taking were not aligned to the conscious belief. So I knew something, but I wasn't doing it. So I knew there was a misalignment. So we're going to have beliefs at a subconscious level and they are based on the experiences we've had, our programming that's come through from childhood. So we spoke a little bit earlier about um, kids and how we can start using appreciation with them. What that does, that's going to build a belief in a subconscious program for that child into their adulthood around appreciation. It'll become part of who they are, part of their belief system. Those subconscious beliefs are all aligned to how we, we feel. We feel a certain way and those feelings are going to make us believe something. And any actions we've taken in the past, we've taken an action and it succeeded. Maybe we didn't master something like Sam suggested we've done, so we believe we can't do it. Oh, I can't, I can't go to the gym because I tried it once or twice. We say that to ourselves enough becomes a belief based on those actions and 95% mean the subconscious is going to prevent us from doing that. So our beliefs are really powerful. So an example might be, I believe that with training, I can run a marathon. So that would be our conscious belief. That's a belief we have. However, underlying all that are the subconscious beliefs, which might be something along the lines of, oh, really, at a subconscious level, I know I can't do that. I know it hurts. I don't want the pain. I'm not a runner. I have an old injury. I don't have time to train. So these are the things that are going to pop up and create that level of uh, sabotage. The beliefs doesn't support us. We're not in al alignment with our goal. So you, you can swap out, I believe with training I can run a marathon to anything. I believe I can write a book. I believe I can become a great leader. I believe that I can meditate. I believe that I can expand my business organically. But if it's not happening, we know there's something at a deeper level preventing it. So what is self-belief? Self-belief is a mixture of our confidence plus the faith in ourselves and more importantly, the faith in our abilities. So all of these together create our self-belief. So if we're missing a level of confidence, well, then we need to get that confidence. And we do that through our behaviours, by taking action, proving ourselves, having the evidence that we can do something. Then once we have that confidence, we then that then gives us faith. I've done it before. I can do it again. And then we start to build our abilities. And those abilities are strongly linked to what Sam was saying around having that mastery mindset, where he uses the word consistency. So the more you do things over and over and over again, the more you're going to change that subconscious belief. One of the things that I've learned over the 20 years of um, being able to fully understand human potential, I realized that the thing that helps us the most, the thing that's going to help us change the, uh, the subconscious is repetition. Repetition is the thing you have power over, and that takes a mastery mindset. We can also change the programming through other avenues. Hypnosis works. Um, there's a few energy modalities that work, and emotional impact works as well. However, the thing you have control of, where you don't need outside help, is repetition. Is making that decision that you're wanting to change and then going ahead and taking the action. So one, one thing that is going to be really powerful to, for you to fully understand is this idea of having a self-belief set point. Just a show of hands, who's heard of this term before? Okay, we've got Lara has, yeah. 
Oh, no one else has got their camera on, but you can put your little, your little tiny, um, oh, Tate has, sure have. I know Tate has. Tate's on one of my programs. So this self-belief set point is similar to any kind of cybernetic system we have. So a cybernetic system, I'm using some scientific terms here, is, is like a, um, it's like a cruise control or a thermostat. We get to set that. And our self-belief creates that for us. The way we see ourselves becomes our set point. So it's automatic regulation. We have cybernetic systems within us that regulate what we do standing up. We get feedback from the environment around us that maybe we're leaning over. So we put ourselves back straight again. When you're um, driving in your car, if you're using cruise control that has a cybernetic mechanism in it, you set the set point to, I'm going to talk Australian terms here, sorry for any Americans, we might set it to 60 kilometres an hour. And if we go below it, the car speeds up. If we go above it, the car speeds, uh, the slows down. We have the same kind of cybernetic system within us. The set point is what we believe about ourselves. And it's automatic. And then as we're going about our life, our internal, so our internal stories that we tell ourselves, um, that the thought patterns we have, and the external environment, these are always providing us with feedback. And once that feedback comes in, we will go back to revert back to our set point. So I noticed this was happening when I started my business. So as I said, it took a while for me to actually get off the ground. And I realized that what was happening is I had a belief set point where I identified as an employee still from 20 odd years in the corporate environment. I still had a employee mindset. And what I needed to do was become a business owner. And so I had to change my set point. I had to change my belief from going, hey, I'm an employee. What does an employee mean? My beliefs around being an employee is I have to wait for permission. I'm not good enough to make decisions. Somebody else has to tell me what to do. I need to work these certain hours. I need to feel guilty if I'm not at the desk doing some form of work. So I had all of these things I was bringing into my business that weren't serving me. So I had to work out what would be the best set point, what would be a new belief system. I need to believe that I can make decisions. I need to believe that I have the authority to make decisions. I need to believe that I can act on my decisions and that I can experiment and that it's safe to experiment. And the best way to learn is through mistakes. So I did work to start to change that set point and I'll give you the tools on how we do that. What will happen is, and what I noticed, and this happens all the time, whether I'm trying to start a new exercise regime or maybe I'm starting a new um, eating regime to experiment with something, I'll always go back to my set point. So even at night, so I've, I've stopped having like desserts and chocolate. I've stopped having them for quite a while, but even still my set point goes, oh, you feel like something sweet, Georgia. It's after dinner. This little voice comes up because I'm programmed to have a couple of squares of chocolate after dinner or a little bit of ice cream or something like that. But I don't want to do that anymore because I'm trying to look after myself. But this old little voice comes along and goes, hey, Georgia, you know how nice it feels to have a little bit of chocolate? You know how nice it feels to have that? That's really sweet. You need something sweet right now. So what it's trying to do is take me back to what's known and what's familiar, back to the, the way that I was, the identity that I had prior. So whether it be changing a role in your career, whether it be trying to, um, trying to start a new exercise or health regime, whether trying to become a better leader or grow your business, whatever it is, you'll always return back to that set point. If you're not getting the results you want, we need to look at the set point. And then what happens is this cybernetic system, when we don't seem to be moving 
and we might go and sneak that little piece of chocolate because we've always done it, looks and feels like we're sabotaging ourselves. But here's a little secret. We're not sabotaging ourselves. We're protecting ourselves from the unknown. We're protecting ourselves from the things we haven't dipped our toes into yet. And it's a really powerful, powerful system. But we have the ability to be able to actually befriend. Once we understand and have the knowledge of how it works, well, now we are in a place of power. Now we have the ability to be able to make the changes that we need to. And we can start to go back to what Sam said and we get our goal. We go, okay, now my goal is this, to have a business, to meditate more, to write that book. So we know our goal. I know I need to have behavior change. I know I need to have habit formation. And it's going to create a new identity. But what we need is to tell our subconscious before the behavior change or during the behavior change and during the habit formation that this is safe. We need to start telling the subconscious that this is who I am, that I am capable, I am worthy, I deserve, this is safe. We need to give it new commands. So how does your cybernetic system show up? What's its modus operandi? So how do you know that this part of you, your set point, your cruise control, so is, is starting to bring you back down, it's keeping you safe? What are some things that you might notice? So the first thing, you will start to have a little bit of self-doubt and maybe second-guessing yourself. Do I really want to write a book about poetry? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Hmm, does the world need a book about another book about poetry? Like there's so many out there. Like, and what have I got to offer the world? Really, I'm just Jaleel. Right? These are some of the things potentially, and I don't know, Jaleel's smiling, so I don't know if any of that's ever happened. Or maybe Tate might be going, oh, I'm not really a leader. I, I really can't do this. I don't have the right skills yet. And that plan, that this looks too hard. Can I really do it? When did I write that plan? Who was I? What was I thinking? All right, so we start self-doubting and second-guessing. Another thing, oh, I'm not good enough to do this. I'm a bit inferior. Who am I? I'm not a writer. I'm not a leader. I've never run a business before. I've never organically grown a business before. Meditate. Oh, my God, have you seen all the crazy people that meditate? I don't want to be one of those. Oh, I don't fit in here. This is not me. You know, it's really interesting as I started to change my own set point around my wealth, around my health, around my business, so you can do it for any area of your life, I started to pay attention how I felt in certain environments. So if I was in a group of, um, let's say, managers, CEOs or executives, did I feel like an imposter here? Did I feel like I deserve to be here or not? And I really, and this goes back to that sensing what's going on in your body. Your body will tell you because your subconscious mind is in every cell of your body. So it's going to communicate to you through your feelings and emotions. So if I'm sitting in a room with a whole lot of people and I'm feeling something, my body's telling me. So I learned to tune into that. I don't feel comfortable here. And then I'll tell myself, well, that's bullshit because they're just humans like me. What makes them any different? So then I'd come home and I'd think about, well, what was the thing that I felt uncomfortable about? And I'd start to rewrite a new script. Or it might be, going down the, the high end of town where all the nice fancy shops are that are really expensive and I never would walk in there because I didn't feel like I was worthy. I wasn't one of these wealthy people. Oh, there's a feeling, Georgia. Go and deal with that. What can you do to start changing and feeling comfortable in these spaces? Because anything that's unknown is going to 
this the set point, the cybernetic system, that self-belief part of you, it's going to bring you back. So this is that embodiment piece, really feeling what's going on in a certain moment. So listen to your body. It's going to give you the messages you want, especially if you're feeling like an imposter. So if you want to raise your digital hand, who procrastinates a lot around things that you know you want to do? Sam does, Tate does. Yep, Melissa Forrest has got a thumb up there. Dalil, oh, I've got a lot of procrastinators here. Beautiful. That is generally a sign that you potentially could be misaligned. You consciously know you want to do something, but subconsciously you kind of got a set point that's saying something differently. So we need to change that identity. We need to start aligning ourselves. As soon as I changed my identity, procrastination went out the door. It's very rarely that you'll find me procrastinating. If it's something I haven't done before or a bit scared of, I'll get busy and change the subconscious program so that I take the action. So procrastination is also your cybernetic system's modus operandi. Fear of failure. This fear we have of failure is that I don't want to get out there and look stupid. Subconscious mind goes, you, you, might, you might die, you might look stupid, the world might throw tomatoes at you. So we don't do those things because it's safer to stay in the, the lane that we know. It's safer to stay in, the, in the, the mindset, in the belief systems that we know. So it's doing this beautiful job of just bringing us back to safety so that our nervous system can breathe a sigh of relief. But what we want is to, we want more than the known. We want to grow. We want to get out of our comfort zone. But this cybernetic system is going to keep bringing you back in because it doesn't want you to fail. This was one of my blocks for a long time until I actually realized that the only way I'm going to learn and grow is to fail. And I need to fail and I need to fail fast. So I changed the story I told myself about failure. Even today, running this summit, there was a few times when the brakes went on before I reached out to Julie. And I go, you know what? If this doesn't happen, if I have three people show up, it's still a success. I had to let go of that fear of failure and redefine what failure was and know that it's a learning. So who knows, after the end of today, we might decide to run more. Who has negative self-talk or continuous feedback loops going on in their head? So show of digital hands, Melissa Forrester, Lara, okay. Cybernetic system, playing it out. Let's just tell yourself a little story in your head so that you stay safe. I'm going to keep you where you are. So this is, again, another sign that we, we've got a misalignment between conscious and subconscious. Another thing that can happen is that we start externalising it and we might make excuses for why we can't do a thing. So I will never run a marathon. It does, does not interest me. However, if someone did ask me to run a marathon, I would come up with all of these excuses because it's not part of my identity because I just said to you, I'm not a marathon runner. I'll never run a marathon. It doesn't interest me. Subconscious belief there. You'll come up to me and ask me and I'll go, I've got a shoulder injury. Or I'll complain about something. Or I'll blame the shoulder injury of why I can't do it. So excuses, blaming, and complaining, if you find that happens a lot or you're creating some drama to stay safe, to stay where you are, more than likely it's the internal system going, let's just keep you safe in the known. Don't go over there. Don't do that thing. Here's an excuse. I'm too tired. Not today. Maybe I'll start tomorrow. All those things pop up. Who's given up on a goal in the past? Yeah, look at that. Tate, I can see you nodding. I love it when there's people on camera because I get to see the responses. Yeah, 
This is one of the things it loves to do. You get to a point and you go, I'm just giving up because I can't do it. I've tried a few things. Giving up means you're not aligned. And then you get to choose if you really want that goal or not. If you really want it and it's you haven't been getting the results you want, have a look deeper. But if you decide consciously and you make an informed decision that you don't want it, different story. But if it's still something you want, we need to get at an alignment. We need the beliefs at a conscious level to be aligned at the beliefs at a subconscious level. Okay. I think it's time for a breakout room. So we've got, I don't know how many people here because I can't see everyone. But Lara, have you been able to, we've got a smaller group now. How many are there? Can't see. Are we able to put them in maybe groups of three? So what we're going to do is pop you in a group of three and there's a question for you to discuss. If 95% of our life comes from the subconscious and your cybernetic system relies on your programming to keep you safe, how can you determine your self-belief set point? So how are you going to know what's your 60 kilometres on your cruise control? How can you know what your set point is? So we'll give you five minutes in the breakout room to discuss that how are you going to determine and how do you know what your set point is and those of you that are still with us but not in a breakout room if you're up for it um pop in the chat what um your answer to that question would be how can we determine our belief set point see what you come up with Jalil, yes i am reading your i was reading your mind <laughs> definitely definitely speaking my truth georgia my god she's listening to my thoughts this is this is this is real uh, i can i'm i'm happy to kind of riff on the the question um if that's uh absolutely we can riff on it here yeah. amongst those that are still we can have a riff for a few minutes and those can listen so what are your cool. thoughts julia uh, it's a good question i don't i don't so I think the the pieces that you outlined in the kind of the modus operandi of the cybernetic system, right? Just like taking a moment to be conscious of um, either people or places or situations where I find myself behaving in the ways that you've outlined, whether it be procrastination, whether it be um, you know blaming or uh, complaining. Um, situations where I discovered that kind of internal talk, the internal narrative of, of, of a lack of worthiness that, you know, that, that sense of, of not being good enough that Erica talked about. Um, and I think just that mindfulness and being mindful of those moments and allowing for myself to, uh, you mentioned this in the chat, uh, I believe during Sam's presentation of of kind of being your own personal scientist, right? It's just like observation, this, this constant sense of observing my behavior, my patterns, my activities, how I engage with from a place of as close to ob objectivity as possible. And then for me personally, the way that I make sense of the world is through writing. And so like when I'm having those moments, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing them, maybe I jot them down. I have a notebook with me or maybe I take notes on my, on my phone and then I kind of dive deeper into that. And I explore, you know, within the context of the page, what is coming up for me, right? And what is the belief system that I may not be conscious of that is creating, uh, that lack of, of, of movement or uh, realization of the goal that I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the second piece of that, and I'm, I just kept hearing things like the, like Bob Keegan and the, you know, the uh, immunity to change and that worksheet of like really diving into those, those counter beliefs and the, the, the deeper fear and uh, what am I actually protecting myself from? Um, would be kind of the phase two of that, right? Diving deeper into and really unpacking some of that. Uh, yeah, some of those competing priorities that I have uh, that's keeping me from realizing my goal. So, 
be because the, the cybernetic system is the part of you that's protecting those competing those competing priorities that you have at a subconscious level. Something else is more important here. Something else mm-hmm. is safer and more important. So I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to revert you back to it. Right. Yeah, it's just because it's a subconscious. Those priorities you have are subconscious. They're the, the 95% bringing you back again. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I just candidly, right, the, the book example that I've shared and it's come up even in, in helping to co-create uh, the Thriving Mind Summit, but really anything at this phase of my life because I'm in uncharted territory mostly everywhere at this point. Um, I noticed that some of those competing priorities are I'm a fear of rejection, right? What if people don't love me or they don't love the thing that I create? Or what if they don't want to participate? What does that mean about me? And so I'm protecting myself. The competing priority here is I'm protecting this sense of of needing and wanting to be liked and accepted and appreciated and seen. And if like the counter happens, if I go all in and I throw my book out there in the world and nobody loves it, what does that mean about me? Right? And so there's like this protection of this need to be accepted that definitely comes up for me personally. So I'm going to call on some people from some of the breakout rooms. I'm going to try to remember who was in what one. So. Daniel and Tanya, were you in a room together? David, sorry, David and Tanya. Yeah? Yep. Oh, you both are muted. Awesome. So what did you, what was your answer you came up with? How do you determine, how do you find out what your set point is? Don't know for me that I've actually fully determined that, but what I think has come for me lately is really being more aware of I guess those things that you've talked about, like in terms of negative self-talk, how that how that impacts on my experience with staff that I'm working with, how that contributes to uh, my perception of how I'm doing as a manager as well with my team and how that also interacts in, with the work that we do with clients. And I use the example of, because I'm in a, a counselling, um, a management of a counselling role, Um, And we talk a lot to clients about building self-awareness, how negative talk can contribute towards their experience and building distress to tolerance. But then how do I apply that then in my work context and and observing really kind of being an outside observer, noticing how interactions actually resonate for me in a bodily and mind perspective and how that kind of feeds into some of the themes that you were talking about. Yeah, beautiful. And that's absolutely so for everyone, have a think to have a think about and pay attention to what's actually showing up for you. Now I'm going to move on because I've got like three minutes of time for the formal presentation. So I might eat into the question and answers time a little bit, Lara, just saying that, putting it out there. So here's something for you all to think about. If you're not sure how you're going to determine what your set point is, it's it's rather easy. Look at your life and your results. Because whatever your constant results are and whatever's showing up in your life um, is going to tell you what your set point is. So if you want to know what your set point is when it comes to money, look at your income and your bank balance. If you want to know what your set point is in relation to relationships, look at your social circles, look at your partner, look at the people you spend most of the time with. If you're wanting to see what your set point is in relation to your career, see where you are now in your career and whether you've moved a lot. Do you do similar roles? Is there a set point? Is it, have you been stretching yourself? If you want to know what your set point is in relation to your health and fitness, look in the mirror, get on the scales. It's going to show you what you believe you are worth. So that's a way to just to have a look have a look at the results you're achieving. If you're not achieving what you want, well, you know you haven't got the set point that's helping you, supporting you to get there. So how do we uncover hidden beliefs? We're going to do a really quick, pretty much one minute exercise. So I want you all to grab a piece of paper if you haven't got one. And in the middle of that piece of paper, I want you to put, I'm just getting my timer up while I'm talking, I want you to put a circle. And inside that circle, I would like you to put the words healthy lifestyle. 
We're just picking up something here. Seems we want to thrive. We want to have a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to start my timer. When I start, I'm going to let you know. You've got one minute to write down absolutely anything that comes up in relation to healthy lifestyle. It could be good, bad, or indifferent. When you think about a healthy lifestyle, what does that mean to you? And I'll give you uh, a minute to do it, and then I'll stop. So the shorter amount of time, the less thinking you have, the deeper you go into the subconscious to uncover your hidden beliefs. So everybody ready? Start writing. And pens down and stop. Okay. So you all have different things written there. What I want you to do a little bit later is grab that and have a look and circle anything that has a unhelpful or negative connotation to it that won't serve you, that is a negative belief, a hidden belief that you have. You will have beliefs there that, have, that will serve you. You might have healthy lifestyle means I get to play with my kids. Awesome. We want to keep that as a belief. You might have, oh, having a healthy lifestyle just means time and effort. And you go, mm, that probably doesn't serve me. All right. So we want to highlight those and then we want to learn how to, we want to change them and change the narrative for our set point. You can switch out healthy lifestyle to writing a book, being an author, being a leader, running a business, meditating. Anything that you're feeling stuck with, pop it in the middle. And what we want to do is uncover the things that could be at a subconscious level. You can do exactly the same exercise, but I would suggest no more than a minute. Put your timer on and don't do it for any more than a minute. Then take out those and highlight those ones that are not serving you. Then what we want to do is take those things and change them. We now want to align the mind the conscious part, the idea that we think we can write a book to the subconscious mind that's preventing it. So now we want to change that set point. How do we do that? First of all, you need to reframe those limiting beliefs. What does that mean? That means everything has an opposite. So that belief that, you're, that you have that's not serving you, can you craft out uh, affirmation, a declaration of purpose? That is the opposite of that. So an opposite might be, for me, marathons are hard work. Marathons are work, worth the effort is what I might change. Then we want to reinforce those new powerful beliefs. And reinforcing them means finding evidence in your environment around you. It means using repetition and putting them into the subconscious on a rep repetitiously. So it might mean every morning, you rewrite them, you resave them, you have them stuck on the mirror. You want to flood the subconscious with that information because the negative you know, identities or beliefs we have, they got there through repetition. They got there because you were exposed to things over a period of time, whether it be in your childhood or in your adult life. So what we want to do is ex we want to really expose more of that to the subconscious whether you actually physically believe it to be true or not, you eventually will through repetition. This has been a game changer for me and a lot of my clients is scripting an updated identity or a set point. So at the moment, I have one that I'm redoing. Um, every few years, I'll go, oh, I'm feeling a bit stuck. Something's got to change. What goals haven't I achieved? And I'll start a new script. I'll pull out the things that are holding me back and I'll re-script them and I'll plant those suckers, I call them suckers, into the subconscious mind. So script your identity. Cognitive restructuring is, while you're in the breakout rooms, we spoke about this very slightly. It's about challenging those beliefs, testing those assumptions. So if I'm going to have a feel of fear of failure, well, maybe I need to go and do the thing and see if I do fail. Or a fear of rejection, maybe I'll do the thing and see if people do actually reject me. Test it, see. So challenge those beliefs. This is one of the most underrated tools available to us. Visualization or mental rehearsal. Create a picture in the mind. The subconscious is a sponge. It believes anything that is going on around you, whether it's true or not. So 
start giving it some information, start visualizing and mentally rehearsing this new version of yourself. And 100% use repetition. It is the key. It's mastery, as Sam said earlier, repetition, and even Erica mentioned as well, keep up with these practices. So add to your toolkit, changing that identity so that it's aligned to where you want to go. And finally, I want you to think about, you can either type this in the chat or write it down. Now that you know what you know about self-belief and our identity and being able to move ourselves forward, what's your top takeaway from this presentation and what would be your next move? So you can either pop it in the chat or put down a little highlight on your notebook of the thing you're going to do and take away. So we'll do a quick recap. Your self-belief is not fixed. You can change it. You have the power to do that. You have the power to rewrite your subconscious mind. The whole idea is simple, but it's not easy. It does take effort and it does take repetition. You need to approach it with the mastery mindset, be the scientist of your own life, have some curiosity, and most importantly, have a bit of fun as well. Be playful with it. Go and see what you're capable of doing. Remember, there's a part of you trying to keep you safe, but it does keep you stuck. So be nice to this part of you. It's actually doing an excellent job. But what we need to do is just give it a new set of rules. And you can change your cybernetic set point. And it's going to take patience with yourself, a little bit of effort, and a hell of a lot of repetition. So that is the completion of my presentation. I hope there was some insights and information for you there to help you start to thrive and change those things that maybe have been holding you back and and actually start to realize why there is that self-sabotage why we might feel like an imposter it's actually not a bad thing it means that you're working perfectly well and we might just need to tell ourselves a different story and give ourselves a new command so I'm open I think we've got a little bit of time for questions How's our, our MC going? Do we have time for questions if there are any? We do. We, got, we have a couple minutes for questions and then we'll roll right into our next speaker. Um, Georgia, that was absolutely lovely. Um, anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask Georgia while she's still here? Georgia, what would be your number one tip for somebody that has um, been asked to step into some higher duties? Okay, my number one tip would be to go through the list of those higher duties and, and feel within your body which one of those feels like, oh, that which one of those gives you a sense of fear or doubt. So can you give me an example of just one higher duty that you've got to do that kind of makes you feel a bit icky? Uh, we'll be overseeing 12 staff. Okay, so what I would then do is go, oh, overseeing 12 staff, that does not sit with me. It's my, my subconscious is trying to protect me going, hell no, woman, you can't oversee 12 people. So we want to give it a new command. And you might tell yourself something different. I'm an inspirational leader to 12 or more people. I can lead effectively to 12 or more people. I'm a kick-ass leader, especially when there's 12 people or more in my team. Whatever language you want to use that works for you, choose something that's the opposite and then plant that into the subconscious. And Tate, you're going to have to use repetition. It's not just say it once. It's say it and where you can feel like, hey, you know, I can do this. I'm a kick-ass leader for 12 or more people. I can do this. Feel it. Look in the mirror and say it. Hope that helps. Great question. Thanks, Georgia. Thanks. Beautiful. All right, if no one has any more questions, back to you, Lara. Thank you so much. I had my own um, gem that popped up, illuminated throughout your conversation there as uh, we were in the breakout rooms and haven't gotten to formally formulate it through words yet, but thank you for sharing um, it was wonderful.